Um, Bartel has been one of the persons who's watched all the shows. Um, I talk to him on a regular basis in the um, EverQuest Next IRC channel. What we saw with, uh, you know, Kunark for, for EQ2, you did those 400 quests, you did all the content, and at the end of it, the world wasn't changed. Yeah, I'm Phantom X. I uh, do social media and uh, write articles for EQ Nexus. For the fall of Baskin, um, there was a very definite, okay, this is this is where your story is going to fit into the, the world. Listen, fluffy looking bear. Thank you. Listen, <laughs> um, I went and I killed a dragon, and then two drops of whiskey hit my face, and I willed this manly beard into <laughs> cow was raising yes. Hello and welcome to the Evercast Show, episode number 37, which we've titled Let Us Slay. Uh, Everquest, Evercast is an Everquest Next and Landmark podcast. Um, we, we talk a little bit about other games in, in, but generally we try to stick on just Everquest Next and Landmark. Uh, with me are, um, the co-hosts, uh, Flattis and Trina. There is no Kai Lust tonight. Uh, say hi, boys. I'm not even supposed to be here today. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Evercast Show, Halloween edition. I am Chewina. <laughs> You're about to hear something wild. You something obscure. <laughs> Our opinions are those alone. A dimension of sight. A dimension of mind. <laughs> a dimension You're moving I, into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You just crossed over into the twilight zone. <laughs> yeah, I hope that's not copyright. Or else we're just going to, you know, <laughs> mute the first half hour of the show. Um, so yeah, we're Evercast. Uh, we like to, to say that we are the, you know, we connect players with the game they play. Um, so, hi guys, how are we doing tonight? Let's talk a little. Uh, let's talk <laughs> a little. Fantastic. How are you doing, Dan? How are you doing? Um, I still don't have any floors. I still have holes in my wall. Um, I still like. I wanted to bust out my H1Z1 hat because we were going to do a hats episode where we all wore hats, and I'm like, oh, sh oh crap! So you guys are still wearing hats, and I don't have a hat. Okay. Yeah, I. I I had to pull this hat out of my car because all of my other hats are all like packed up. They boxed everything up when they tore out the floor so that they could, you know, remove the flooring. Ah, oh, haha. Apparently, uh, I put Flattis' Twitter name wrong. I blame the guy <laughs> who <laughs> took the <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, his it's not ours. He never tweets. <laughs> Screw that guy. Look at that. Well, I'm sorry to hear, uh, Tamlin. If I could, I would cast a magical spell your direction, and I would fix it all for you. Unless I am not a wizard. It, it, you know, like in the end, it doesn't really matter because when we bought the place and when we moved in, the person that owned the house before us kind of did like a, a do-it-yourself amateur, you know, put in the floor, and it was apparent that this was not professionally done. And so we would all, you know, Kyles and I had always talked about, like, yeah, you know what, we really need to rip up these floors and have them professionally done because we don't like the way it looks. It, and, and now it's like, well, I guess we get to do it now. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Now you can just let your design just flow. You, you should go something crazy, like um, a tiled disco floor. Lights no. and everything. No. <laughs> you wouldn't do that if you had the money available. You wouldn't no, do that, is that what you're God, saying? Please, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I, no. I would do that. No. <laughs> you know, um... We did talk about doing, um, since we have a, uh, we don't have, um, like a, we have a subfloor, but like out here in the desert, they do a, a, a single pour concrete construction. Like they just pour a cement slab and build the house up on that. And so we talked about just like, well, why don't we just stain, you know, put like a stained concrete down because in the summer it would, you know, 
keep cooler. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, legendary is with me. Says so lumicite inlays. I'm totally. Glow in the dark paint on the yeah. If you guys are building, you need to send him some designs right now so you can implement them with his insurance money when it comes in. <laughs> uh, we do have a question from Wrecky Mmo for you, Tamlin. He uh, he asks, did you fight a water dragon to get that fantastic beard, <laughs> like a mountain man? Yeah, I I don't know exactly what the inspiration was. I think it was just a couple of weeks back. It, it was before the flood house that. Uh, no, it was the day the flood happened. Like I'm like, I'm growing out a beard again. And uh, yeah, this is actually... What's going to happen when November comes? You're just going to be like all hair. You're I'm going to shave up until November starts. No, no, no. At the end of the month, you're not like, completely destroyed. And and see, I'm not going to do the whole November, November thing because I also like, I will not let it grow on my neck. It, it becomes too like it, it, scratchy and itchy. Like I'll keep it up off the, the neck. What if you go for the little, like, satanic, just, uh, I don't even know what you'd call it. It's just, like, a little string of hair that comes down right here. <laughs> no, I, I thought about it. You should totally do that. <laughs> I thought about it. I thought about it, you know, just, like, doing the whole, like, you know, cle not not to the skin on the cheeks, but, like, close on the um, on the cheeks, and then just, like, do the, the pointed, you know, pointed beard. But, no, I don't know. It depends on what Kyles allows me uh, to get away with, because at some point she's going to be like, "No." So it's yes on beards, right? Like I'm, I'm getting my beard going too. What about your, where your beard? <laughs> you gotta say yes to the beard. I have not Look at this. Well, you know, you gotta say yes. <laughs> say yes. I was literally about to grab a sharpie when I saw this beard today, and I was going to color it in so I looked okay. like more of a man. Here, I just opted for the suit. Here is a theater trick, okay? Mascara. Grab your girlfriend's mascara. Oh, yeah. And, oh, and like use the bristles to kind of, uh -huh, I like it. I like it. It, it will also, if, also, if any of them are growing in blonde, it will darken them so they, it'll look a lot more fuller. Hey, and I, I know this from theater. Like it. No, it's cool. Yeah, no, it's cool. I understand you dress up every now and then. We all do. Uh, sometimes we'll spend a couple hours in front of the mirror it's... dressing up. Um, <laughs> how about for you, Flattis? Can I please have one utterly delicious milk shake tonight, please? Uh, and, and I'll have uh, some utterly delicious burgers with that too, please, sir. <laughs> Why don't you go and explain to the crowd who you are tonight for Halloween? Yeah, sure. I uh, I work at movies. I'm, I'm pretty much just a disgruntled clerk's worker, <laughs> which is fine. My other costume was three circles on a piece of paper, and I was just a three hole punch. I was just a three hole punch flatus. By the way, no one Google movies tonight. Badly, if you do. Uh, so, which is it, Star Wars or Lord of the Rings for you? Oh, Star Wars. It is Star Wars, but but Lord yeah. of the Rings is such a masterpiece. I mean, no, it's, it was three <laughs> movies about walking. Even the trees walked in that movie. Yeah, well, they're a little healthier. Okay, <laughs> we we didn't suffer from um, God. What, what was that movie? The Pic Pixar film Wally. -E. At least we didn't suffer from Wally -E disease with everyone just sitting there with their big old guts. Doesn't that strike you as weird for Star Wars? How everyone flew everywhere and lived in the future where they probably didn't walk much, yet they were all very fit and skinny. It's probably because they had food that was you know regulated. Just like no type. calorie food, just eat it yeah. for no reason. Yeah. So we have a great show plan tonight, don't we? <laughs> That's not yeah, true. It's a I was gonna yeah, say Java. We don't have a good show. No, 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 no. Well, Java's race it starts off. They start off thin, and then just like the fatter they get, the really. Yeah, I didn't know that. I I think yep. if Kyle was here right now, she'd just be like, "Oh yeah." Talking about Star Wars, <laughs> I, which that lore is probably gone because of Disney. All hail Disney overlords. <laughs> Disney has deep, perplexing plot twists. Okay, have you ever seen a Disney movie? Sir Frozen, let it go. All right, let it go. Donald Duck and Math Lamp. Right, what did we? Slay, let us slay. <laughs> right, what did we feed you? you? Can't hold me back anyway. All right. Wow. <laughs> so, PvP combat 
has been updated in Landmark. We have tons to talk about tonight in regards to that. Uh, Tamlin's going to be our moderator tonight. If you do have any questions for us, put uh, your question in chat with the questions bracket, and we'll be sure to uh, answer it throughout the show. Uh, other than that, is there anything else you wanted to talk about, Tamlin, on ECAST News? Uh, just two quick things. Um, that um, Next week, uh, November 2nd episode, will be our ogre discussion and the EQ Next lore. So this is your one-week warning that if you haven't read all the e-books, you don't get to complain about spoilers because we're going to be talking about all of the e-novels. Um, you know, we've, we've already seen the style sheet for the ogres, but we're definitely going to get into, you know, the ogres. Um, and then the other thing is that Extra Life 2 2014, like the main date happened uh, last night. I know that... Uh, Chewie and I were talking before the show that we stayed up. I stayed up pretty late watching Skylatron playing. Flavis, what about you? Did you watch any uh, gaming streams for Extra Life yesterday? Yeah, I popped it on Tobrin. Uh, Tobrin stream. Uh, Shinter stream. He, oh. uh, I tried to catch him when he could. His internet was having was giving him issues. I, if I would have known ahead of time, I would have helped him out because he, he joined the Helsing Army, so I would have streamed for him. Um, and had him on like on Teamspeak and play games with him and and help support his uh, extra life uh, if I would have known ahead of time. I did know sure. and I felt bad. I think we needed some kind of sound effect like wah 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 for that. That, you, seems, you that seems poorly planned. You could have been there, Flattis. You let your man down. Uh, I think you should be in the doghouse tonight. Well, hold on, hold on. Since we're talking about planning, right? Next year. Okay, yes. Artemis. <laughs> I, I want to do an Artemis stream next year for, for Extra Life uh, 2015, and I, I want to do the whole... I, I want to go full-on geek-out cosplay with, like, uniforms, uh, multiple cameras, multiple people in the, the, in the, the room playing Artemis. For those that aren't familiar with Artemis, because I, I just realized that people might not, it's a it's it's basically a Star Trek game, right? So that you requ it requires at least two people to play, but it's played best with six people. Each person gets their own um, screen to control the ship, and then you get your server and you fly around in space. And I want to do the full on, ex you know, like three or four hours of playing Artemis in costume and in character. So you got you you guys are done, right? You guys are done, right? It. No, I'm literally gonna start stocking up on cardboard boxes and making a set. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally have like a Star Trek set when I sit down in my seat. It's gonna yeah, no, let's do this. That'll be awesome. Uh, for twenty four hours though. We could uh <laughs> I don't know. No, 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 I'm not gonna do it for the whole switch back and forth. Yeah, I'm not gonna do it for the full twenty four hours. Just just that would be fun though. Just a couple hours. Yeah, congrats to Team SOE. They raised 21000 ish right? Yeah. Well, that was last night. It's probably uh, gone up a little bit since then, but that's fantastic. Um, overall, I can't wait to see the numbers this year. It's going to be good. I saw Tryon was like uh, the three, number three in position. Reddit was on top, and then there's someone in, in the middle between them. I don't remember who. Uh, but yeah, simply fantastic. SOE was around uh, rank 16 last time I checked. So. Yeah, they were this. Good job, guys. That's fantastic. Very cool. Did, did anybody know how the te the O team did? Because they had a goal of what, like five thousand. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't know. Mm. I didn't look. Um, who was streaming on on O? Like I popped into one O team channel last night. I just forget who it was. It might have been Sog. Sog, I know, was streaming for the O team. No. Uh, anybody in chat? Anybody? <laughs> anybody at all? Yeah, all right. What did you guys think in chat about Extra Life? I know, they always want to jump in and correct us, but when we ask them for a <laughs> they, they, they got nothing! Oh. Well, that, 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 that's okay. the, uh, what's that internet phenomenon, that if you want the, to know the answer to a question, you don't ask people what the right question is, you state the yeah, wrong yeah. answer. Yep, uh, Legendary got it, 9k or more for OT. Cool, cool. Oh, it's fantastic, damn. Yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of wish I, I planned something to do it. I didn't do it last year either, and then this year, I, I, I'm kind of and you. I know I was making fun of you, Flattis, and I do apologize. But literally, like it was Friday afternoon, and I saw, oh, extra lights going on this weekend. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. Yeah. You know, was, I didn't keep track of it. I am. I didn't sign up, but I'm sort of glad that I didn't sign up this year because, like, I, I mean, I know that I make an effort to do the show every week, but like the amount of 
of uncomfortableness I feel in my own house right now because like I have two rooms that are completely empty I have like three rooms in the house that like the bare minimum of living in them is in them um and so like some you know Saturday I just wanted to sit and do nothing I didn't want to talk you know to insurance I just yeah so I'm, I'm actually sort of glad that I didn't sign up this year well yeah I mean my room's always uncomfortable, 24-7 uncomfortable, <laughs> and I don't even need a flood, so I can understand, absolutely. Like, I was I was really dumb to position myself in this corner of the room thinking, oh, this is going to be a great idea for streaming because no one can come behind me or anything like that. No, I feel like I'm like locked in a cage, and I'm never allowed to leave. It's, it's pretty bad. I don't know. And, and my I, desk at work is awesome because I have three or two monitors at work, and I have, like, a TV, which is, like, rigged up as a kind of quasi-monitor here, and then it's tiny monitor, which is, it's, it's odd. Yeah. 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 When, I, when, I, when I move, my next setup is probably going to be, like, my computer next to my television, and then I'll have it go through that so I can kind of, like kick back a little bit <laughs> and then make myself a little more comfortable because I'm like I'm not really in a computer chair I'm kind of in like a chair chair so like that's like these are things like desk actual desk next to my TV computer chair like so next year hopefully I'll have like a better setup two monitors I actually have my new monitor I just don't have the space for it so but I sure. <laughs> where do you go? yeah when I get my new when, when mission studios or <laughs> Mission Studios, Ground Control Central, or Ground Control Studios, that's what I call this place, Ground the Control, <laughs> right, when I upgrade it, I'll take some more pictures of it, because, um, the, yeah, it's definitely upgrade coming, but uh, that was a good, like, 15 minutes, guys, um, Landmark, Combat, Landmark, Combat, new textures, new props, the, what do you guys think about the new textures, so we have lava in now, it doesn't move yet, um, but it, it looks fantastic, Looks also, um, the new stone textures have a lot of depth to them. Like, it, it's ages ahead of the old textures that are in the game. Yeah. I see already some of the ogres that buildings that are popping up with these new textures. It looks fantastic compared to the earlier stuff. So now I'm wondering, is it so much a polygon count with the engine that bothers me? Or there's just those early textures that are still in the game that really bother me. I'm starting to think it's more texture-based. I don't know. I I am so behind the curve on building and textures and stuff like that because you know you want me to make a square block fort I'm your guy other than that I got nothing like I I are closest to your common buddy to a square block fort though man, maybe I'll different. give it a try yeah, yeah, I, I, can make, yeah. <laughs> I can make a mean square. Just a big old square, dirt square. You want a dirt square? Come see Flatus. I'll make the best dirt square you've ever seen. We should, we should make this a competition. We should all do an ogre build over the week on our spare time whenever we oh. play, and then show it next episode and have our viewers uh, vote on it. Oh yeah, I'll tell you this. Listen, who's going to get the least amount of votes from this guy? Because I will literally Just put call a... Call in your army, man. Call in your army. Oh, my ar my army's gonna be like, do you, do you think my army's gonna help? They're gonna be like, dude, we can, what do you want? Other small blocks around it? We'll see. I think we should do it. Uh, let's see. Rec already says yes in chat. Um, if you guys want to see this building competition over this next week leading up to the Ogre episode, put it in chat. Dude. These guys are trying to get out of it, but I think we should do it. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with the chat. Like, if the chat is like in support of the idea, then I'll do it. If they, if they're like. <laughs> Then, there then you go, not. guys. Put it in chat. Hashtag build. That's a terrible oh, hashtag. That's the worst hashtag I think I've ever heard. Wow. Hashtag build. Hashtag, build. hashtag <laughs> lazy hashtag. <laughs> that's, that's how you know that this is the in unscripted <laughs> part, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So, um, EverQuest next. What have we heard about EverQuest Next recently? We had a change in the live shows. Now, pretty much, we have the Landmark show that's going on. That's going to be sort of a tour, a building tour, in-game sort of event. Claim tour. Now. Yeah, they're, they're kind of building the show, and they kind of want suggestions. Um, they'll let people that are, like, if you want to be on the show and kind of tour your claim with them, they'll do that. Just let them know. We... They're, we we totally missed uh, Ecast news that Dexella is no longer the community oh manager. <laughs> yeah, oops. Mneris, 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 I think. And her her Twitter Twitter handle is kind of tiffy, and that's easy to remember. But <laughs> yeah. absolutely, um, yeah, that's very cool. Uh, welcome to the community. Even though you've probably been in the background the whole time, we didn't know about it. Probably. What's Dexella moving on to? Do you guys know? Just more like management or. 
I don't think it's really been said, has it? I don't. Uh, maybe next. I don't know. No, I think it was marketing. Like she moved from the community management to marketing. Uh, but I, I don't know. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Don't quote maybe. me on that. Don't hold me to that because no, I. It's been done. It's been no! done. The sellers at marketing because Cameron said so. And if he's wrong, more hashtags must come. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that's the way if that's the way it works, then then I'm not going to say anything the rest of the show. No, Tam- <laughs> Tamlin is now a part of the the intern community remote, you know, management. <laughs> um, she it still says community manager on her Twitter page. Okay, so probably just whatever. Yeah, because Anne Nurse is taking over for EverQuest next and Landmark. Now, I can see a, it's that sort of a temporary position, maybe, because once the two games get going, you're totally going to need two community managers for that. So yep. maybe just kind of setting the groundwork for that. Who knows? Well, um, I th- like I said, I think they're starting to make the push towards EverQuest next. So. Yeah, but then again, we found out from the Ogre Workshop show, which all I'm going to say is this, <laughs> where we're not going to talk about it this episode, um, was that they didn't even have the models done. They said that this was fairly recent concept art that they just kind of threw together for the Ogres, and that they don't have any models yet to test it out. So, I don't know. I'm so torn. I keep going from, man, I think this game's being secretly constructed in the background, to what are these guys doing? <laughs> like, no in between. I, I want to say that, oh man, they'll have a nice build out by February. Well, can sign up for beta, maybe. But I'm you can starting s- to get nervous. Maybe it might be next SME Live. No, I'm well, t- wait, wait. Listen, my prediction was next <laughs> SME Live, so I'm still was, sticking with that. It was, yeah. And, like, but see, that's like you say that, but we, we, we've seen the Dark Elf model and we've seen the Karen model. Now, we've only seen one variation of the Karen, Karen model, and that was at SOA Live in 2013. But you know, they have like they have it, and so you know, they probably have other models, they just haven't shown them to us. Possibly, yeah, maybe they're just saying it's not there. Also, they were saying something about Ixar's being uh, great, not confirmed playable yet, I guess. Um, but it was there. It was in there. Um, cause just because this is EverQuest and next news, it's not really over related. I, I kind of, I was gonna say, I kind of feel like they have do- the dwarves ready to go. I just think that they keep maybe, getting voted. And maybe they keep getting, they're not voted, so we don't get to see the models. Maybe they're yeah. playing wrong. What about the halfling comment? Do you think the the halflings are gonna enter, or did they do that just because they accidentally said Ixar? So see, yeah. with us? And I need to pull up the, the notes, because when the last time we talked about races, they said that there were going to be eight play, playable races at launch, and we knew five of them, and during the, land, the the Landmark Live or the workshop show, they confirmed one of them that wasn't one of the original ones, and so there's only one mystery one left. Hmm. So maybe Ixar and Halflings? No, I, I'm pretty Half sure they... Yeah, Ixar was one, I think. Uh, I don't want to. Yeah, Ixar. All right, all right. So let's slam them off. We have Ixars. We have gnomes. Gnomes have been confirmed. They haven't been confirmed, have they? No, dwarves. So we have Ixar dwarves, ogres, dark high elves. elves or elves, dark elves. Um, what am I missing here? That's five. Humans, six. Um, seven halflings. Trolls? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I'm missing something. Absolutely, I'm missing something. Oh, Karen. I didn't even say Karen. All right. So now, yeah, there's there's seven. Yeah, there's a, there's um, one left. Oh, they're the saying Faye. You, you know, they were saying something about Faye and like heroic movement, weren't they? In the past, they didn't say it would be like in the game or confirmed, but oh, it, I think it was a workshop show. Rosie was saying, yeah, maybe with the Faye, the heroic movement, they could fly through the air and do like barrel rolls and stuff or something. Would you Cody. guys like a Faye in the game? Would you play a fan? No, but I know that it would be it would be popular enough to be a playable race. I just don't think they'll launch with it. They'll stick with the the familiar ones, and then they'll patch it in or expand it in later. Ah, that's true. Dig says that uh, Faye won the small race roundtable. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, I think Faye's would be good. Um, all those Asian MMOs always have that one cute race. Um, so I could see maybe yes, so we saying, hey, we want one rather cute race, and they could make those the Fae. Though the dwarves kind of look cute, too, from the concept art. Cute? You don't think so? Like, the females, they have those big puffy cheeks, and they're just like, mm. well, of course they do. I mean, I, I'd um, ask one out on a date. See? There we go. That that qualifies as w- right there. <laughs> no, what? <laughs> I'm just saying, dwarf, <laughs> dwarf lady's got it going on. <laughs> Cuter... 
Cute enough for Flatus, I think was what the comment was. <laughs> that could be a terrible show. Cute enough for Flatus? Question mark. I just don't know. The the mystery dating the EverQuest next mystery dating game. <laughs> oh man. That's fantastic. Okay, anyways, no ogre talk. Um we are here to talk about the landmark updates. Um I had to have time to pop in today mostly to really play, which kind of stinks because I wanted more feedback on the combat itself. But the past couple days I have logged in, been able to kind of play around with the new spells and running around. Optimization, um, for me, is still kind of wishy-washy. Um, I do see that now they slowed down my heroic movement in combat that I am performing a lot better. So I guess not as much things moving around at once, uh, I'm performing a little better and not having to render as much. What do you guys think about optimization? I, like, I, the last time I tried to do the uh, um, Friday night fights, speaking of which, like Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific, whatever time that is in your time zone, but the, um, they do Friday night fights. Um, I am so down to be there. I missed it last week because I thought that it was after Theory Forge, but evidently it's before. Um, but I did it like two or three weeks ago, and what I noticed is is that if I port a lot or if I do a lot of traveling, I need to log all the way out and then log back into the game, and my performance is great. I don't get... Oh, like a memory leak or something? Yeah, oh, yeah I don't know. I don't know that sort of like deep technical knowledge. I know that, that for me, it works. You know, clear out your caches or whatever, and it plays fine. There's also an armor bug I found out too that for some reason switching armor doesn't necessarily put you at the maximum. So I always, uh, or I did, I can't say always because I didn't do it like more than once, but putting on the full plate armor, checking to see if I had 1k and then having to relog just in case it wasn't there. Um, and the teleport bug is still in the game. What are you doing, Sony? I am tired of dying when I teleport. Are you guys still experiencing that as well? No. No. Uh, I, are you really? Is it me? Are you teleporting I, wrong? One time I teleported, um, and that, this is just today, I teleported and I was like at ground level, and then the other time I teleported, I teleported underneath my claim and fell, and then just got dropped above it. But it didn't fall to my death. Yeah, I don't know. I, I teleported to a couple different combat uh, zones today, and every time I just randomly got teleported into the air and then fell to my death and had to start at the hub and teleport back, or run halfway across the map. So that was annoying. Um... And I really wish they would fix that. Legendary is so all day, every day he's experiencing that. But and he like his show is literally teleporting from one uh, one <laughs> what do they call it? Not zone. Um plot. No, they don't call it plots. Claim. Claims Claim to another plot. He would have gotten it eventually. <laughs> I would have. I would have gotten there. So um Well, I mean they're they're optimizing. The next patch should be C But I thought that's this multi whole last month was. Wasn't it supposed to be like we're setting aside this whole month for optimization? Yeah, well it's coming. We still have another week. Fine, fine. I let let's see what next week will but still, like multi threading, I mean I thought this game was being built so it could run on kind of any computer, like wow. Like wow can it can scale and it can run on pretty much every computer. That that's well, not Landmark technically Nintendo true Nintendo? anymore. No, really? No, I had yeah. a guy who played WoW on like a Chromebook and it ran fine. Well, no, no a lot not of anymore. Having issues. Yeah, a lot of people are having issues now with the new character models and everything. So, a lot, a lot of, lot of flame going on. <laughs> the Blizzard forums about it. Yeah, and I really think that that depends on what you plan on doing in the game because, like, even. Even, like, two expansions ago, I was trying to raid and realized I needed to upgrade because my computer could not keep up with the amount of information that was going on while raiding. Oh, wow. Okay. See, I didn't know that. Maybe it was sort of him just running around in the questing zone and being able to play just fine. Right, but that's not... But that's raiding when you're with, you know, you've got uh, 20 other... I think it was a 25-man group, so there's 24 other characters that it, the computer was trying to keep track of all at the same oh, time. True. And all of them are highly active because it's a raid environment. But like, but, but you're you're right, though. In general, like, wow, on the lowest settings in the unpopulated areas, you can get away with a very low-end computer. And and I, I think that they need to... to because and, and here's the other thing, like they've hinted at, but I don't know if they've outright said that they're gonna hope to see landmark on the PS4. It's like you better be able to get the game to run on a four hundred dollar computer. Be yeah, essentially, right? Yeah. 
And, and I think that's that, a good point. And that's a good entry level gaming computer at that price point. And I think that, you know, if you're if you're looking for what type of performance you need, that's where you need to look at. We'll pretend uh, my fiance watching didn't hear that. Uh, intro levels about one thousand. A good computer <laughs> medium's about fifteen hundred. All right. <laughs> Jeez. I, I, I'm gonna find her on Facebook and link her to the uh, PC Master Race Reddit and be like, "Look, look at the prices. Don't let them fool you." No, oh, don't do that. Please don't do that. No, no. A black black top end for about eight hundred. And Black Friday is coming up. <laughs> And Cyber Monday. I'm looking forward to that. Too bad I'm probably going to be broke, but we'll see. You're, you're looking forward to cybering on Monday? <laughs> I cyber every Monday, but we'll <laughs> tell people about that. So, uh, that should be a sound effect. You, you would not be a good sound effect on that. That should be the time. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know if I have one for that. <laughs> I do. Hold on. I do, I do have one for that. <laughs> Gay! I got that. That's all I got for that. I feel like our show could be the traditional, stereotypical, like, guy radio show with, like, a thousand sound effects an hour. It's just like, boom, boom, boom. You've seen Parks and Recreation. Yes. The guys on Parks and Recreation like, da 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 Something, something in the douche. The douche. That's what we need a background person, like a producer in the background that, that that is the one hitting all the sound effects and the one that's switching between the cameras so that I don't do it and I don't accidentally mute myself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I kind of like having the power of the soundboard because I have a button that I've not used yet because I'm waiting for someone in chat just to irk me enough. <laughs> to make it's that bad, but it's like, it's, it's, don't tell them this! It's just the weapon of mass destruction. That's what that button does. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's a, such a great tell them off button <laughs> wow i agree yeah. um we should state that again if you guys would be interested in running a show we're still looking for someone um to kind of run the background of our show that would include things like sound effects uh setting up the overlays doing uh the uh, camera cuts because we have big goals for evercast show and not just this typical oh here's five cameras and nothing's going to happen we like to switch in and out of videos and and pictures but it's really hard for tamlin to do because every time he does it, he mutes himself. So, if you think you should do it and not mute yourself, because you wouldn't be talking, definitely hit us up on our email address, evercastshow.gmail.com. We're definitely still looking for somebody. But back to the topic. Um, armor. 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 And, armor. and did, where, do, where do we want to look at first? Do we want to look at the functionality of the armor, or do we want to look at the appearance of the armor? Let's start at the aesthetics, because I think they're pretty cool. Because I've got a bomb to drop. Oh. <laughs> See that uh, sound effect again. So who wants to? I mean, we talked about it before the show. Who wants to? Who wants to point it out? Hold, hold on one second. Give me one second. Look, Mister. I hear you got a Twilight thing two minutes before the show. Yeah, I went and pulled Twilight two minutes before the show and got it on the soundboard. <laughs> Screw you. We need a bomb voice. Fair enough. All right. I'll pull it right now. Then play it. <laughs> I, I did. I dropped that on him like two seconds before the show started, so I'm just giving him crap. Anyway, so Tamlin, you were going to say, who's going to point it out? I think you should point it out, because you were the one who kind of sort of called it, I think, before anybody else. Oh, this is... Oh, good. Of, of the landmark armor? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, all right, so so the first up, I'm going to show you what the... Um, this is the leather armor on the female, and this is what it looks like. Um... The, right now that the way the armor is set up, you have three slots. You have a head slot, a chest slot, and a hand slot. Although if you put something in your chest slot, it is what is it, it covers up your your hands, and there is no head appearance item that you can see so far. So basically, you base your your armor appearance is based on what you have in either your cosmetic spot or your chest slot. Um, so as I said, this is the leather right here. This is the plate um, for, on the female. Boobs and toes. <laughs> I'm giving that to Legendary. That wasn't me. But I do agree. Boobs and toes. And this is the robes, the cloth armor on the female. Um, I'm going to come back to the three of us right now. Because one of the things I noticed is that the male armor is a slightly different color. It is. 
so on the man um, wearing the plate, it is the red, and on the on the female, it's the silver. And I don't think that really matters too much because I think that I, I hope to see that in the future when you're crafting it, because they talked about crafting, that that's just one of the things that, you know, it's like this item, this item, and red die, and you get the red set. And if it's this yeah. item, this item, and no die, you get the, you know, you get the silvery set. Well, hell, remember, they were talking about, you know, making, like, the shoulder plates, like, the armor system in EverQuest Next, you're supposed to have, like, shoulder plates that are part of a family, so I'll equip, like, one armor thing, and it'll be, like, part of a family, and then I can choose, like, oh, I want to switch out the shoulder pla pads with other combinations, and like that, and kind of craft my own look right there. I don't think we'll ever see that in Landmark, but that's what they're talking about, so I agree, man, I would like to see some sort of crafting. I love... Love, 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 love the mage uh, robe. It's the first time I've ever felt like a cool evil warlock from one of those awesome movies, like the Dark Crystal or something. I'm just like, ah, it looks you really cool. You felt like David. You felt like David Bowie from Labyrinth. I felt like David Bowie from Labyrinth. Absolutely, except a little darker with more skulls. I. I love the cool. Like it's not a dress. It's not exactly a dress. exactly what I was gonna say is that that like thank goodness it's not a, a dress and that, that like not no offense like if you want your character to have like that very traditional like you know flowing robes as a magician I'm a monk and I have five dollars kind of look yeah <laughs> look at my mage robes <laughs> <laughs> I'm cool with that you you that's cool you can do with that I would just like to see more of like this appearance that I'm showing right now where it is kind of like um, loose fitting cloth chest and pants you know yeah, that's, that's fantastic. what do you guys think about the shoulder pads that was a big um i dig it dude i really do dig the armor because they're going with the kind of big wow shoulder pads it, it, what, is it not quite wow how would you guys think as a wow player because that's one thing that was a big critique with the art stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of wowish um, i think it's wowish 2.0 no, no, it's not. Yeah, it's, no, it, no. So, so here's here's where you know that it's not as bad as WoW is that WoW shoulder plates are over the top of the head. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. So, right, so that, yeah. there's your, there's your baseline. Is it uh, is is the the level of the head higher than the level of the shoulder plates? If yes, not as bad as WoW. Oh, yeah, your cool. your your character's heads here, your shoulder pads are like way up here, and they do stuff like they have like oh. magic, like they're they're exploding outward and coming back in, or ghosts are coming out of it and waving high and stuff like that. There's like some weird stuff. Going on. I was watching the Hunger Games last night, the second movie, and she walks down, her dress transforms with fire. Is that what it's, it's like? Uh, wow, yep, that's exactly. It's like fear me. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. That's cool. I like that. Um, also, the feathers. What do you guys think about the feathers? How they're kind of layered up by the head on the road. I really like that too. It's a cool touch because typically yeah. when I wear armor in a game, it's not that visually appealing for me in the back, and I want to look at the front. But even the plate armor has a lot of cool detail in the back neck area for me to kind of look at as a player. I like that a lot. Yeah, you heard it here first, folks. Chewie looks really neck. <laughs> Just looked staring at necks. I, oh, I, neck. I want to see. I want to see the cleric armor in game from SOE Live that they showed. Oh, you. Because because the plate appearance that we're seeing right now um, is very ornamental, and I like a very traditional, standard looking, you know, kind of hist. I, I hate to be like the you know leave my fantasy kind of in the boring realm, but yeah, I kind of want to see a more traditional set, and this is a very ornate um, armor set. I, I think that you know it's good. Because I've seen the cleric wearing a, a more standard one, so like you have ornament, ornate, ornate, ornamented, whatever you want to call it, and then you have this set that looks, or and then you have the cleric set, which is a more traditional set. So like you, you satisfy both audiences. You have a good point with that, absolutely. Uh, I just can't wait to get the epic uh, shield because they already said that that shield is going to be uh, uh, yeah. armor set in Landmark. Oh man, just the the whole mechanization of that shield was just amazing. If everything in like that is in EverQuest Next, like or if everything in EverQuest Next is like that, I'm going to be a very happy fellow. Absolutely. Uh, if you um, the art style, fantastic so far lately. I've been loving it. Yeah, and if you stall for like two or three more seconds, I can pull a picture of the um, the concept art that they showed us. Totally stalling. Speaking of loving it, can I get some fries with that movies. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you even dress like a fast food worker. I am allowed to say things, okay? I dress like a guy from a movie who works in a fast food. <laughs> What, you like uh, what's last that? minute? Let me go get a sports blazer and put my camera on black and white. <laughs> this is planned from the beginning. You don't, don't fool the time. You don't need the details, okay? 
All right, I showed them some pictures of the uh, of the of the concept art for the flame, and then the shadow. I love that shadow one too. It's like and a then shield just and then. All right, so I think it's time to show the show the 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 the, the bomb. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because we noticed, <laughs> we all kind of noticed it. <laughs> so. <laughs> One of the things that we've been really looking for, because we've been doing this, we've been doing this podcast since before um, they even announced Landmark, because we were all that pumped for EverQuest Next, and, and so every time we log into Landmark, you know, it's a cool game, it's it's its own thing that that is very powerful, and I think it's going to have a huge draw. But we're always looking for like, well, how much of EverQuest Next can I see while I'm playing Landmark, right? And they've added in armor; it's another piece of the puzzle of EverQuest Next, right? Well, here we go, guys. Bam. Um, I noticed that there was a direct comparison between the armor that they showed us at SOA Live um, in the Dark Elf, and the, then it, it's the same armor. They have given us the armor that they showed us for, for EverQuest Next. It is now in Landmark. It's not like... Yeah. It's not like speculation. It's like, here it is. And that's the plate armor set. And, oh my goodness, they did it with the leather set, too. The, the leather oh, armor. That's why the female color is different because they showed the female in that armor at SOE Live and they're like well to keep comparisons low let's go ahead and change the color maybe they won't realize right um I, I don't know why. Um, the only thing that I'd have to say is that if you're looking at the leather armor set that the um, Dark Elf is wearing from SOA Live and you're comparing it to the um, the landmark iterations that we have now in game, they added belts and they redid the boots. Um, so I think that that with the, you know it's the, the that whole art asset thing, right? Like you create a, a belt that's interchangeable between what you're wearing, and they said, okay, in the landmark set, it's just one uniform appearance. So. Yeah. Bam, they get this belt, they get these boots, and the when they're showing it for SOE Live, they're showing it without the belt and with a more, not more, less ornate um, set of boots. And that's super cool. I mean, I wonder if that's, like, really engine yet, to where they could just, like, say, hey, let's just swap out these boots in the engine. Um, uh, that's what they're talking about building. Oh, and no, it's I... fantastic that we're seeing something that from SE Live is now in the game. And it's Dude, and, isn't and that it's exciting? For, it's amazing. Uh, that was all I was looking forward to in Landmark. I'm not going to lie. When I first heard about it, I'm like, wait, I'm going to be able to step in EverQuest next before EverQuest next is out? I'm sold. <laughs> like, I walk in, I'm like looking at the shadows and, and how the sun affects everything. And I'm just, I was, I was like a kid in a candy store when Landmark came out. Not so much right now because it's been a while, but I'm starting to feel that again, especially with the combat changes and stuff. I think it's getting to a, a better point and we'll talk about that in a bit. And it's exciting me again, absolutely. Oh yeah, yeah. Like when I, like I, I saw the combat changes and I'm like, okay, I need to get in the game because I need to get a feel for this because now we're, 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 we're creating more variations. And so, you know, the more variations that you have on how combat functions in Landmark, it becomes a deeper gameplay experience. And at some point in time you're like that's as that's pretty deep that's fantastically deep that is so awesome and and we're, we're seeing it now we're seeing it in landmark with your your at first it was just the weapons and i know the armor is pretty much uh, well actually no let's let's talk about the armor and how it functions now because twain and i we were both playing around earlier and and you said that it was like when somebody is wearing that plate armor it's it's hard to take them down isn't it it is no it definitely is um it slowed down combat a lot, I think, and maybe that's just because I'm not the best at hitting my spells right on target yet. But it takes, it, for me, it takes a lot longer. I was just wearing the mage armor, and that's not a lot of armor at all. And I was actually wearing the uh, gloves that had no armor but extra damage bonus. And it still took somebody a long time to take me down um, because I was just sort of slowly moving around, and I guess they were missing, or I just had enough armor to really slow down the combat and the pace. Uh, I guess we can talk a little bit about the mechanics that changed in with this armor. So uh, running is now a lot slower. I actually feel like it's almost at a smite level. Do you feel that way when you're playing Tamlin? Like, it's like, oh, this is smite before I get my boots. And I'm kind of slowly going back and forth on the yeah. screen, you know, having to position myself. Um, but going back to the armor, <laughs> it does. It seems like maybe the armor's too high or 
maybe because I haven't played what you were saying uh, before the show in a, a multi-user setting with a lot of different combatants, that that's maybe what it's more scaled to. Um, and I'm just not seeing that. You know, hey, there's five guys beating on me. I actually have a chance. Um, well, no, and I, I think it's that, like, you, you should be able to stand one-on-one -on -one and it take a long time because you don't want... I, I think that they you don't want combat to be... So, like, if you make one mistake and you get hit by an ability, you're gone because there's no way to catch back up. And so I think that they want to make it so that 1v1, you've got a lot of wiggle room on how much damage you can take before you're, like, unable to catch up with the other person. But at the same time, like, you need the armor low enough so that if you're focused by two or three people that are all hitting hitting you at the same time it's like you're, you're that's it you're they've got you they, they you they you know that's true um and also with this armor we're i i'm so happy to see that we're finally starting to see uh, a class system and i say this because um before it was three things you'd alternate really quickly and you could basically be amazing at everything at once now we're starting to see um diminishing returns i guess in the fact that, yeah, I can switch, but the switching isn't going to really affect me as much because of the armor I'm wearing, and that's a hell of a lot harder to switch. So depending on kind of how I go into the combat situation of whether I'm wearing the robe or the killer leather gloves or I'm wearing full plate, that's going to affect me. Like, I had a swordman rushing me in full plate. So yes, he was very tanky, but his damage wasn't that effective. It really wasn't like it was before where he could just swing a couple times and I'd be dead. Um, I think that's great, too. Mm -hmm. Flannis, what do you think? What do you, I mean, like you haven't got a chance to play, but like, what, what are your thoughts? Like, should should you be able should you be able to get bursted down? You know, in full plate armor, should you have like a good health pool, or should it be more strategic? What What are your thoughts? If you're in plate armor, it should you should not be able to get bursted down instantly? Right, right. Uh, well, wow, uh, what happened? My camera went off for a second. I think oh, I accidentally no. hit the button, or it was Skype this time. It wasn't... In case you guys didn't know, real quick, for Flat just makes this point, um, we kind of had a little gift exchange. Well, not exchange yet. <laughs> Hanlon and Kyles were really nice and decided to give uh, Flatus and I some Merry Bear Butt Eve gifts. Uh, they sent me a new camera, because my camera died last Sunday, so I'm trying it out with the new camera today. Um, and it's not my motherboard, it was the camera. That was Skype that time, now, so yeah, the camera's working fine. But... I, I feel like I should. I, I feel like I should plug the camera because Kyles, um, myself, and now Chewy all use the same camera. It's like the the Logitech C three ten. C three ten. It's like forty nine. I think I bought the less less now. Okay, see, I bought the Logitech uh, HD Pro ten eighty for ninety nine. <laughs> And it died within a year. And I don't oh. even think the picture quality. Like, the picture quality is great. It was 1080, but, like, the C3 10 has a lot of color correction and, and better balancing, I think, of the lens. So it's kind of like, yeah, I can go with a new iPhone, but my Samsung still has great color balancing, so it looks like it just as great of a picture on a smaller scale, I guess. Um, no, it's fantastic. It's a really good camera. We're all, all four of us using the same camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. Wow. You're using it too? Yeah. That's hilarious. Damn. Ah, uh, people yep. are saying I'm still doing leg squats. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Turn off the camera so that you can get a couple of quick <laughs> squats in. Gotta yeah. get my blood pumping, fellas. <laughs> he, did, he, he popped down a, good, a quick five. He was like, I need a five bed. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. You guys caught me. Anyway, so far, you know yeah. what I'm going to say something. Um, yeah, like, I play a tank, so, you know, it's only I think that tank should have a higher health pool, like, plate should take a second, like, if you're gonna just run in and burst the tank down, that's, that's nuts. Like, survivability is a tank's kind of forte. Uh, you know, that's what they're, they're there to do, is to survive, and, and, and having the skills to be able to combat, like, combat back, parry, or dodge, or have the abilities to kind of get out of get out of dodge as quickly as possible and, and attack back. Um, you know, you, you trade damage for, for health. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, even with the boots, what you're talking about dodging, um, yeah. if you have the messenger signal now, you press shift to activate ability, it's like a temporary boost. So I'll have to sit there and time that, kind of like an active and smite or something, to where I really need it. Like, oh, the mage bubble just went down. Let me sprint out of that real quick. Uh, it's making me think a little more strategically about my placement in the game instead of just run, run, run everywhere. 
Yeah, and, and now we can talk a little bit more about weapons because I think the staff had the most changes to how it works. Um, though, though, with that said, I didn't really play around with the bow that much, but the staff now, instead of doing the shotgun burst um, as your left click ability, like I think left, left button, yeah. Um, it now does like a, a frozen orb that snares, and then on its right click, it no longer does the gravity sphere. It does this um, frost shock type thing where it, you know, it, it blows up voxels and freezes people. And yes. and and I, it's like I find myself using the sword more, but I'm really looking forward to being able to use the staff in a group setting because I think it offers a ton of more utility. <laughs> Like, if you have a, a got, I'm going to call them a warrior, but what I really mean is a plate wearer with the one sword in your team, and they're going, you know, they charge right into a group of people, and they're going to try and use their shout to snare them, and then right after they do their shout, you want to hit them with, like, the gravity sphere and the frost shock to keep them all in that close, tight range. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and third ability, oh my gosh, we didn't even say that yet. But yes, there are three abilities now tied to every weapon. Um, and I really like them too. Um, I think that the balance is better on the weapons than it was before. The bow shoots faster, it's a little easier to aim. Uh, it, it feels almost like I'm shooting a gun in a game, and I really like that. I understand bows, you, you think, oh, it should be slow, but the, the combat system so fast-paced that you can't have a slow draw draw a bow it, it's just going to be annoying it's not going to be very competitive unless you're a sniper way in the back and we don't have a combat system that really can do that <laughs> sniping isn't really there I mean, right right it's theoretical it's not going to change there's no zoom there's no sitting on a hillside waiting for something to happen not yet we'll see that i guess more in eqn but or in open world combat maybe once the mobs are in but yeah, I uh, also love the effects, the mage <laughs> spell effects. Like I can press down my area of effect on the ground; it actually makes a hole in the ground. I was playing on this multi-tiered thing, just trying. Uh, there's a sword fighter just following me and following me, and I'm just <laughs> dropping him down every time he comes at me because I'm clearing the little material below, and he just falls into the lava. It was great. Um, yeah, it's uh, awesome things. Awesome things. Now. Do you? What do you guys think about going back to the armor um, and talking about the kind of increased armor and health pool? Does it feel too slow now? What What do you think you can do or can be changed to make it feel a little better? I'm mm. going to jump on that. Right uh, well, I was, I was, I, yeah. <laughs> my train was going off another direction where I was talking about like the the sword and how it used to be like if. I'm sorry, I brought you back. <laughs> <laughs> on the so well for for one thing they they took off the cooldown on the charge ability with the sword right so you can charge and then charge and then charge now what I didn't get a really good chance to see if they removed the delay before you charged because it used to be like a ramp up and then charge and I didn't really get it like I, I should have spent more time trying to play around with it, but um, I do, I do know no, that you're you... right. It felt clunky, man. It was insanely clunky. I did not like it at all. And the other thing they did is what we asked for in that if you charge into someone, you no longer just pass right through them. You charge and you hit them and you push them. And that's awesome because like... The, 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 it adds a, a, a dimension to the strategy that you can use with that charge ability, right? Like you've got someone up on a on a ledge, and you need to get them down because they're you know they're an archer with a bow, and you can just charge them and hit them and knock them down. And because you're in plate, you've got more armor, so you soak the damage when you land, and they're just all like splat. Those type of things. Um, and then the other thing that I noticed with the sword is that like if you go into third person perspective and you're up a little bit and you were just swinging your sword, your sword would clip the ground as you were running around yeah. and it would destroy the voxels underneath you as you were running around. And they changed that. Now I don't like, I didn't go up to a voxel wall and see if I could still chop into voxels. Um, and I should have. It still does work. It's just, uh, it's a little more specifically aimed at where you're trying to hit. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's great because that, that's that, you know, they, that, that's two items of specific feedback that they got from, from me and from other players about how the sword should function that they've now added to the game and so that's like you know when while they're while while they're building this game you know you tell them what they 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 should change and what they should look into on changing and if it makes sense they'll do it and the two examples right there so and definitely absolutely I think that, as you were saying, I think it is the armor pools currently um, are a bit high. Um, I think they can be toned down just a little bit, but I don't want to see them like dropped to a fraction of what they were, maybe like 80% of what they were. Yeah, 
maybe it needs to be tied to abilities, but um, I want to see more, even more situational play. So for the first time, we're seeing it sort of open up to where I can play a certain situation depending on how I want to play it. But I'm, I'm still not that effective when it comes to attacking. Like, if I'm an assassin, I want to be able to drop somebody's health right away. But then if I don't do that, I need to run and get the hell out of there before I'm going to die instantly. So if I'm wearing all those killer glove armor, and I pop up with the sword versus, you know, coming at it with full tank, my sword should do a lot more damage. It should knock me down quick. But at the same time, if I got caught in that mage AoE right there, then it should be instant decimation. Uh, I think that it's still too standard across the board, and I will probably see that change as time goes on and it becomes even greater of a system. But I, I smite again. I can sit there, and if I'm a tank character, I can take a lot of hits, but it's still situational. And Talon, you were experiencing this too when we were playing Smite. Just because you have a higher health pool in Smite doesn't mean you can just walk in and soak up damage. It's still very situational in movement and placement and figuring out when it's time to go and when it's time to run away. Um, and I think I want to see more of that in Landmark. I haven't played that much, but it's starting to seem like that's important, being more situational. They need to give us those ultimate abilities, right? Because yeah, yeah, because that was like that, right? Exactly. You know, and that was that was the the real key. Like if you and and if you knew that you had a tanky character, like uh, more often than that, they had a control ability where they could control part of the battlefield, and they that was their job, right? Like rush in, control part of that battlefield, and line up other people. People's ultimate so that you could really like burst someone down and absolutely and uh, yeah and i don't know if that's gonna be possible in landmark because they're they're talking about three you know items and it's gonna be quicker combat but that's something in eq next i absolutely want to see i really want to see pairings of abilities work really well together even if it's not designed so oh if i shoot my arrow through his fire pit it becomes a fire arrow but just simply like oh i can line them up and I could, I could execute strategy that way, you know, like running a play on the football field. I'm going to force them to this side, so when they get into that side, I can utilize all my attacks just right to take them down. Uh, and that reminds me of one of the other things. I need to make my to-do list. Like, the, one of my complaints about using the bow, right, is that, like, in a, in a first-person shooter, right, you, like, move behind the prop, and then you dart out, and you shoot, 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 and then you dart back in before they have a chance to return fire on you, right? And, and then I noticed when I was playing Landmark that as I went behind the prop, that they could still shoot but you know through the prop and i didn't get the chance to log back in and see like hey i'm gonna stand behind this prop right here you see if you can still hit me yeah and it's you know, <laughs> weird um because planet side 2 in the forge light engine has full collision like every single bullet you fire is a physical object that they keep track of so they can say oh this is how many bullets fell like they can literally track how many bullets were going off in an area and how it affected things um and this game it doesn't seem to be like that at all Yes, there is some physical projection going on, but the fact that it doesn't really work through the voxels quite yet to where I can stand behind something and have it shielded perfectly, you're right, that's, that's something that needs to work. I think so, anyways. Dun dun dun, quiet. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's only like uh, two minutes before the break, and we really haven't heard a lot from Flannis, so Flannis, why don't you... Yeah, man, what are you doing over there? Making a surprise? Burgers? What's going on? Oh is, is it lactose intolerant? Because that's what I need. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> it's lactose intolerant. You know, maybe if you did more walking like in Lord of the Rings, you'd be able to make a burger faster and talk to us. But, uh, it's okay. I don't know, man. You both seem so pumped about, about the soul. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. I, at the end of the day, like the combat's fun. It's still not where it needs to be, because it just seems like they tweaked a lot, in a good way, they tweaked a lot of stuff in the right direction, but there's still, like, there's still bugs, and they still need to fix that, so it's always, like, it's always, it's right now, it's just, like, this uphill battle, so, uh, people really need to, need to make sure that their voices are being heard about it, and I said it on, uh, on, on Live Feature Rant with, <laughs> with, uh, with Legendary, not, in a not, maybe not so nice manner on that show, but I'll be a little nicer this time, um, because I felt, uh, people do more complaining than they do, just sit down and actually, um, speak their mind in a respectful manner, and say, this is what's wrong, this is where we think you should fix it, and if you do that, just, you know, if other people, you find out and they believe you though they should upvote your forum post and people see it and the sony will look look into it um 
So I'll say that. It's already 9, according to my camera. So I'll come back. We'll come back, and we'll talk more. And I promise I will be more boisterous <laughs> in the second half of the show. But I, I will tell you that I picked out the two videos, so I'll lead us into that real quick. Uh, one video. One? What? One of your video got, didn't, it didn't pass through our sensor. Um, legal cut it. Like, legal said, we cannot play this. Sorry, so there's... No, I, yeah, no, I, I sent you two. We'll talk to legal, man. Talk to legal. We can't... I don't know which one you one. got. I sent two. Yeah, and I sent you another one. That was funny. Yeah, the other one that got cut. Um, How did you... Look? <laughs> the, uh, the title. look at the title of it, man. Just look at the title. If, what's wrong with that? Did you cut my video, chat? <laughs> If what's there's wrong not, with the title? Are you looking at the same video I'm looking at? Yes, I am. I think that Everyone video is hilarious. Everyone like, what the hell are they talking about? Chad's been sh just crapping on... Chad crapped in my Cheerios Literally, since this show started. It says, it says, the title is just... Uh, I can't say it on air. That's how bad it is. Dude, it's, so, it, it's so funny. That video is so funny, and it's so good for Halloween. <laughs> I I might have muted myself, but crisis averted. Um, I have the second video. Um, <laughs> All right, I'm going to lead in with these two videos. The first video is uh, from uh, a, a guy on YouTube I follow named The Hive Leader, and he's he's doing a series called his Perfect MMO, and, and I follow it because it's, he's kind of describing what we believe EverQuest Next is supposed to be. So, um, his, this, this, his second video in the series, first he talked about characters, now he's talking about Endgame. And that, uh, I don't want to ruin it, but was, he's talking about Endgame. The second video is a guy playing through uh, Amnesia, The Dark Descent. And it's really funny, and the guy screams like a little girl through a lot of it, and uh, uh, that's not traditional fire. And that's my final thought on that video. So, uh, I will count us down at camping. In five, four, three, two, one, see.